everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about working as a student in Germany or working while studying in Germany. I believe that one of the great perks of studying in Germany is that you get the chance to work while you're studying, whether you want to or you have to or both. Germany makes it super easy for you to combine your work and your studies. However, there are some things that you have to keep in mind and today I want to walk you through the rules and everything that you need to keep in mind before starting to work or looking for a job. And I'll also be sharing useful tips and resources and my own personal experience and my tips based on what I have done while I was studying and which jobs I have been doing while I was studying. So let's get right into it. Let's begin by answering the the question of who can work as a student in Germany because depending on whether you're a, an EU citizen or a non-EU citizen the rules are a little bit different. Technically everyone who is studying full-time in Germany and is enrolled in a German university can work in the so-called student jobs. I will explain a little bit more about the different student job types later in the video. As a starter just know that if you're enrolled in a German university you can work while you're studying. So let's jump right into the different regulations that are in place. EU internationals, I think this is the easiest one and this is the one I also belong to and can give you first-hand information about. So as an EU international, you can follow the rules that apply to German students. This entails that you can work for up to 20 hours per week during the semester, while during your semester break you get to work for up to 40 hours, so basically full-time. However, you have to keep in mind that during during a year you are not allowed to exceed the so-called Steuerfreibetrag. This is the tax exempt amount and you always have to google the one that applies for the year because it kind of increases every year by a little bit but in general you should really try not to gain more than this tax exempt amount which for 2021 is 9744 euros. Now for non-EU internationals the rules are a bit different. This means that you don't have this 20 hours per week, 40 hours during your break rule, but you are allowed to work for 120 full days or 240 half days during a year. So also for you, be careful about the Steuerfreibetrag, the tax exempt amount. Another important note that I want to give you is that a half day, what I was mentioning earlier, is everything below four hours of work. So basically if you have a day in which you work three hours or two hours, that also counts as a half day. So really be careful about you know making the days count because otherwise they get detracted from your amount of days that you're allowed to work in a year and that's not good. <laughs> and uh, same applies for a full day. So a full day is everything between four and eight hours. So it can be eight hours but it can also be five hours, six hours, seven hours etc. So you know try to always use these half and full days to your best advantage. Especially if you have to work to support yourself or your studying. There are however um, a few exemptions to these half and full days which is um, the internships that you have to do as part of your curriculum for your degree. These are called Pflichtpraktika in German. Another exception to the 120 and 240 rule is the so-called TV jobs which is the academic assistant jobs. These are jobs that basically you can do at your university. You can either be you know assisting a professor, you know, preparing the lessons and photocopying uh, handouts and stuff like that, taking care of student correspondence, but you can also work in the library or at the departments, whatever. There are a lot of jobs that you can do at the university and basically these jobs, they don't count towards the 240-120 rule. As far as I have read, consult your university regarding this because I don't have this first-hand experience. However, I just want to mention that usually they don't pay too well compared to, you know, a back student job, which is a student job in a company. And they tend to pay a little bit more than minimum wage, but not a great deal more. So if you're looking to, you know, gain a bit more money, you know, to pay your rent or pay your basic expenses and you, you're really counting on the money, see if it's worth it. Otherwise, it can be a great stepping stone, you know, for getting some experience onto your CV and then applying for other jobs based on that experience. It can be super cool, uh, but you know, it depends on your situation and 
how much you have to earn kind of. And for the non-EU students, I would really recommend you to get in touch with the Bundesagentur für Arbeit, which is the Federal Employment Agency and uh, the Ausländerbehörde, which is the Foreigners Registration Office. And in some cases also the International Office or the Career Center at your university, if your university has one. These are the places that can help you find out all the answers regarding your work permit as a student in Germany, if you have to get a different visa or stuff like that. Those are the people you should seek out and even if you have worked your whole 240 or 120 days, half days, and you want to work more or you found an internship or something, go to them, talk to them and see if there is a way that you can still start a new job or get some extra days. I don't know how exactly it works, but those people will be able to help you. Now let's get to the interesting part, how to find a student job in Germany. I found that there are mainly four ways that you can find a student job. There's probably a few more, but in a general way, I would say these are the four ways to find a job in Germany as a student. First one is internet or job portals. Job portals such as Indeed or Stepstone and even LinkedIn at this moment. Those are the ones that I have used and usually use if I'm looking for a job or if I find a, an interesting position that I want to know more about. Another way to find these types of jobs is also going to the website of a company that interests you directly and go to their career section. So sometimes you will find more jobs there than the ones that are posted on LinkedIn or on Stepstone or wherever because you know posting those jobs on the platforms costs money so I think the companies especially the ones that are not big corporations with huge resources they tend to post only a couple of jobs or the ones that really need to get filled and the rest you can find on their career site so always always check that out as well because usually that's also where the actual you know job posting on an external platform will lead you to if you want to apply to the job so the career portals of the companies you're interested in are a good way to start however there are also other ways to find jobs another great way is notice boards at university what do I mean by that? In German, they call them Schwarze Bretter and they're basically spread around the campus and you can find them in a lot of corners at your university and you'll find everything up there uh, from events or people trying to sell their stuff or looking for roommates, etc, etc. But a lot of times you also find job postings. These come from either the faculty or, you know, the university itself. But depending on where the notice board is, you will also find different, you know, companies that are looking for people that for example speak Japanese or study business you know they tend to put them in specific places to get the attention of people who study a certain degree another great way of getting a job or looking for a job or finding a job is walk-in but be careful <laughs> this works for jobs such as waitressing bartending working in a shop or a job that gets you into contact with people sometimes you'll get lucky and they'll say yes or no we were looking for someone we're not looking for someone and you might even get invited to do a trial shift and other times they will tell you just check out our website and go to the famous career portal and just apply there it depends really on the place where you're applying to another important tip that I want to give you in these cases is in Germany a trial shift usually is about four hours which usually is not a paid shift but really make sure that if you're doing a trial shift that is longer than four hours that you're getting paid for those extra hours or that you kind of clarify that beforehand but in general you know in restaurants or bars or whatever a four hour trial shift should be enough to assess your skills and capabilities and see if they're interested in working with you further and everything that exceeds that should be part of your retribution so make sure that you're not getting exploited in that sense and last but not least this is something that comes into play later but it can really be helpful whenever which is networking what do i mean by that this is everything from networking events career fairs and all you know those career evenings that they do at universities sometimes or even outside universities but usually in university cities where you have uh, different companies trying to get you to apply to their open opportunities for internships and uh, working student jobs but also networking 
is something that you can do with your network of people. Everyone you know is basically your network. So if you have someone that is studying with you that works for a company and maybe they have to leave or they found a new job and they're looking for a replacement, that could be a great way to get your foot into the door or even other people that you know from university that maybe don't study with you but that you know and work in a company, that can be a great way for you to get into that company as well by applying of course and going through the recruitment process. It's not that easy that if you know someone you'll just get a job right away but it's a great way to be alerted about opportunities because sometimes they go so fast that they don't even have time to post them or if they post them they already have someone that will fill that position. You know always keep your ears open and talk to people if you're looking for a job tell that to people you know tell them hey guys I'm looking for a job does anyone know anything anyone know about somewhere where they're looking for you know students you know how to do that so what type of student jobs exist this is a great question <laughs> because there are different kind of job formats in Germany for students but I would say it's mainly three so you have the 450 euro mini job the Werkstudenten job and then in some cases the self-employment route which does not mean that you have your own company and you know your own little startup and you're the boss of everyone no no so the self-employment uh, option is usually used for event and promotion jobs however I want to warn you beforehand this is just uh, something that EU internationals and German students can do so a mini job or a 450 euro job is basically what the name says a type of job arrangement where you can earn up to 450 euros per month and not more. Usually this will give you the possibility to work for up to 10 hours a week I would say. It depends on how much you're getting per hour but it's between 10 and, and 12 hours a week. So if you're uh, an EU international this is not you know using the full potential of the hours you can work per week which are 20. So if you want to work more you'll have to look for a Werkstudenten job. Usually um, if you want to work especially in a company they will only offer Werkstudenten jobs because they usually need someone that is there for you know two full days like eight hours a day and maybe some more so that you can really be of help and support to your team and to the people that you work with and having someone that is just there for 10 hours a week that would mean two half days that's usually not something that big companies want to do but you will find these types of jobs at a university for example or in gastronomy summer service and sometimes even companies but I would say companies usually go for the regular working student jobs. Hi, so apologies about the change in lighting, but I had to re-record this last part. I hope you can hear me more clear now. So let me just pick up where I think the sound got kind of bad, <laughs> which was the self-employment option in the job types. I have done this just once uh, where I worked at, at an event job and I kind of did that on a so-called Lohnsteuerkarte. This means that I didn't get an extra tax number for this self-employment type of job. I will try to find some information to link below so you can kind of make sense of what is required but remember these are just for German and EU international students. I think um, it can be a super cool experience. I have friends that only did these type of jobs and uh, from what I've heard from them it has been a super cool experience because they got to meet a lot of different people, be in different places and participate kind of in different events and yeah they basically got a new experience with every new job that they got. So there's pros and cons to these types of jobs. Uh, one pro is that you can basically work at an event that kind of goes on for four days from Thursday to Sunday and be set for a month basically from what you earn because these jobs pay between 80 and 100 euros per day. So if you work for four days basically you have your 400 euros. If the alternative was doing a 450 euro job you know you would be set for your entire month with that. On the other hand the kind of con would be that for each job you have to apply individually so you have to look for event job apply for them and kind of make your own schedule it's usually external companies you know event management companies that recruit the personnel so once you get the jobs kind of have to organize your jobs a bit yourself so it's not you know the same employer where you go to every week and you kind of have your little routine there I personally don't like these type of unpredictabilities uh, I like to know what, where I'm getting into but if you're into that totally go for it there are some really really cool interesting events that you can work at and yeah it's uh, it's super fun as well I have
have been talking a great deal about EU internationals and non-EU internationals. What do you mean by that? Basically, the EU internationals are all those people that come from a country that is in the European Union or in the European Economic Area. The shortening for that is EEA. The German version of that is EWR, which stands for Europäischer Wirtschaftsraum. So don't get irritated by that if you ever find that in you know other articles in German where they talk about working as a student. Another interesting thing that I want to recommend to people that maybe have a great grandparent or someone in the family that came from an EU country, I would recommend you to look into uh, whether you can get a passport for the country your family member was from, which would make working in Germany much, much easier if you're able to get a, an EU passport. I know some countries do that. Italy, for example, is one of those. How and what the procedures are, I don't know, but um, it's something to look into if that is the case for you. And then, well, basically the non-EU internationals are all the people that are from all other countries that are outside the European Union. So another interesting question is uh, if you have to be fluent in German to work in Germany. Now, this is a tricky question because in my case, for example, I was really lucky because I am fluent in German and I was fluent when I came here. So I basically, if I wanted to, I could have applied to any job that a German student would have applied to as well because I didn't have this um, linguistic hurdle. And I know that most people that come here, especially if you study in a public university that is offering courses in German as well, they will require you to have a certain level of German language skills. But I also know that this is kind of, you know, a different story to being fluent in everyday life and being able to, you know, come up with a, a response on the spot because, you know, some jobs just require that and human interaction requires that. So you might feel like you're not ready yet to you know, be in an environment where you're just chatting in German every day, but I'm sure you'll get there. <laughs> what I want to say is that you should definitely aim to get to that point because, I mean, you live in Germany, so it's the country's language and yes, you can get by with English, but in most, you know, official kind of places like at the town hall when you have to get registered or, you know, deal with all the EMTA, those people don't like to speak English usually, so you'll have to no German. And again, I think that it's kind of a given, but I'm just gonna say it. Knowing another language is a great plus point on your CV. Your CV will get updated throughout the years after you finish university and once you get your first couple of jobs and even beyond that. So knowing German and being fluent in German is a super big plus point. So you should really do it for you and to make your life easier. And another thing I want to mention is that if you don't speak German, like in every situation where you have a linguistic disadvantage, you're more likely to be taken advantage of. And Germany is super strict with rules and everything is kind of made so that everything works perfectly and uh, in a correct way but you know everywhere where there's people there's also situations where someone is trying to take advantage of someone else because they feel as if they are more powerful and even if that is just like you know a linguistic advantage so it would really decrease your chances of being exploited if you know the language and if you can communicate in the language in a way that no one takes advantage of you and your time and wastes your time most importantly because you know you're studying and you're offering up what little free time you have to work, so it should be a nice experience. However, <laughs> that said, I want to say that yes, you can find jobs in Germany if you don't speak German in a fluent way or if you don't know any German at all even. But again, I don't recommend it, but some jobs could be, you know, working in a hostel where your uh, customers will be international people that come in and out and, you know, just visit the city and they're looking for someone that speaks English. Yeah, another point is that if you don't speak German, at least you should know English. <laughs> even bars, for example, you know, Irish pubs, a lot of times the people who work there, they don't even speak German themselves or just a little bit and um, it could be, you know, a good way to start. But even, you know, in restaurants or something like that, working behind a bar or in the kitchen, something that is not customer facing that could be a great start or even you know companies that work entirely in English or need someone to you know be able to communicate just in English because the workforce is just very international you would find that in uh, bigger cities and more international cities but these jobs do exist however there's less of them so you know being able to speak German in a fluent way will increase your chances of finding a job as well so now let's get to the interesting part which is my own experience and my tips for you so during my time as a student I have done multiple jobs which included waitressing, working at the university, 
working in a company and even working at an event. <laughs> so I basically have done it all and can give you a bit of insight from my side and give you a, a bit of recommendations and personal opinions that you can follow but you don't have to follow. So let's start off with the waitressing job. This is what I did for most of my time while I was studying and I did it because it was the job where I could get the most money out of with the hours I had to bear or basically with the hours I, I could work. Usually you would work around um, two or three times a week in the restaurant or bar cafe wherever I worked at at the time and I would usually try to fill up all of my 20 hours per week that I had and my main reason for doing this job was the tips so I think that everyone who is a waiter does it mainly because of that um, I mean it can be a cool job and it's fun and especially if you're someone who likes to move around a lot and talk a lot and if you're sociable and like to talk to people but yeah th that is a great motivator for people who do this job I mean tips in Germany are not the same level as in the US but the good thing is that we at least receive minimum wage sometimes even a little bit more depends on the place where you work at but usually I would say that all of the times I have worked as a waitress I was able to kind of double the wage I would earn for that day in tips so I would kind of get double my wage on average sometimes it would be more sometimes it would be less it depended on the day basically but it was a great way for me to save up some money that I could use to go on trips in the long holiday breaks that we get in Germany. So that was one of my biggest motivators. After a while though, I wanted to do something else and gain some valuable experience in an office environment, basically. So that is when I started working at the university. I was working in the department of economics at my university and I was uh, helping out the team that was responsible for the event management. And I basically helped them out with planning, the coordination, and you know, working on the actual event, preparing everything, you know email correspondence with the students and you know also organizing apart from the graduation different events within the department so that was really cool and I got to meet a lot of people and a lot of different you know service providers and um, kind of got a really good overview of um, how things work in uh, such a big department of such a big university which was super cool and interesting and after that and this was when I was almost finished and I was writing my thesis I started working in a company which was really cool because I got a lot of experience working in a team you know with people that work full-time and manage these big projects and uh, I got to see the things from start to finish and it was really really cool and it made me learn a lot and kind of prepared me very well for the actual job market and from for the time when I would be going to apply for jobs which is funny because I got offered a full-time job in that company and stayed there after graduation but I would have felt prepared to apply for entry-level jobs after working at that company and around the same time I also did this event job that I mentioned earlier and yeah it was really cool it was a big team I think 30 people or something and we were working on this two-day event at a big German bank where they had some kind of yearly festivity or open day yeah, there were people working in different areas and doing different things greeting people or working behind the bar or you know opening and closing the gates it was pretty cool and it paid 12 euros per hour or 13 euros per hour just to give you uh, frame of reference this was 2019 so roughly three years ago yeah I mean I ended up working at this student job so I had a regular income and uh, regular hours that I was going to work but it was a really cool experience so if you want to look into that if you're an EU international definitely do that and um, you'll get to meet a lot of people and learn a lot on these different events and yeah you'll have more flexibility in planning your time and yeah that's it pretty much so i really i hope that you enjoyed this video and i hope you find the information i gave you helpful please let me know in the comments if i should talk about something more specific or if you want to know more you know about applying for jobs and the whole process just let me know whatever interests you and i will try to make a video about that as well take care and i'll see you next time bye